so back to the portal so we will open Azure Active Directory and then we will go for security Under security, we will go for conditional access. We will create a new policy. In the policy name, we will just put a meaningful name for us. So it will be easy to understand what is it. So for me, it will be Atalla organization, which is Atalla AVD. This is our application. And then I need to apply MFA. So the organization name, the actual application, and what the policy is meant for. And then on the users, I will select the Azure Virtual Desktop users. In the Include tab, I will select Users and Group. And then click on the User and Group again. I will search for AVD. So I need the users as part of the AVD access and the users are part of the AVD license select what is the actual application on the cloud apps tab I will select the Azure virtual desktop so I will just click on the include and then select apps here if you search it by Azure virtual desktop you will not get the actual application. So as I highlighted while I was explaining, I would provide you with the application ID. So instead of searching by the name itself, because it's even it's called Windows Virtual Desktop, I would provide you with the actual application ID. And then instead of putting the name, just putting the application ID, you will be pretty sure that this is the actual application that I need to apply the MFA on. So this is the application ID. Select and then select. So under the condition, we will identify the device platform, the location, and which client application as well I utilize. By the way, you don't have to specify all of them, but we are just uh, giving you the options so you can escape the condition and you can directly go for the grant and under grant you will require the MFA so it will be simply apply the MFA for all the users that are part of the AVD group and for sure this MFA will be applied only for the application that we included on the cloud apps which is the Azure virtual desktop so condition can be skipped but I'm just identifying it here for you so you can understand what kind of condition you can apply so let's say on the device platform, I need to include select device, any Windows device and any iOS, please apply the MFA. This is just assumption, by the way, you can just make it for all the devices, but I'm just giving you the uh, a specific assumption, iOS and Windows. And on the location, you can specify any location or a specific trusted location which is will be part of the uh, trusted location that we're gonna highlight here under the security tab or you can specify select the location from the trusted one that you have so if I'm just clicking on that it will open the trusted location for me on the trusted location right now I just have the MFA trusted IBs which is the public IBs related to my organization but I will not configure any of this right now because I need the MFA to apply to be applied anywhere so I will go for the client app. Let's confirm that the location is any. Close. Uh, no, location is any. And then on the client apps, I just need to apply them if a whenever you are logging in from the browser. So if you are logged in from uh, the desktop client, I will not apply them if a for you. But if you are logging in from uh, browser I will request you to uh, get the MFA login 
this is again just a separation to see to show you the difference between while you are using the specific uh, client and another client so if you're gonna use the browser you will be requested for mfa if you will use the desktop application you will not be requested for the mfa that's it let's go for the grant i will require the mfa for the users select in the policy tab i will make it on and create important note Whenever you are configuring a conditional access policy, you have to disable the default security controllers. So as we highlighted on the presentation, uh, Microsoft is enabling all the security default in your tenant whenever you don't have any, a con any conditional access or any specific rule is configured. So Microsoft directly applying a specific uh, default security controls. So to get your conditional access function, you have to jump into your Azure Virtual Desktop, disable the security defaults, and then create your uh, conditional access policy. So I don't need to lose this policy configuration. Uh, what I will do, I will just make it report only and then create. So the policy itself is being created, but it's not function. And then I will go back to the actual Active Directory, home, Act Azure Active Directory, under properties, and then under the security defaults, I'll just disable it. And the justification for disabling the security defaults, I will say that I already have a conditional access configured on my organization and save. Go back to my security tab, conditional access, AVD MFA, I will make it on and save. So before we test the actual uh, conditional access on the client itself, let's use this tab, which is called what if, to see how this uh, policy will be applied on the different user and different devices. So I will click on what if. I will just select the user that part of the group. So let's say AVD management and select. And then on the client app, I will select the Windows Virtual Desktop. Select. So I'm just trying to test the impact of the conditional access itself on this user when they access this application and click what if when this user is accessing this application MFA is applied but in a specific condition for sure as we highlighted it's gonna be on a specific device so this is when the user is logging in general let's say when the client app is desktop what if so no policy why because the policy itself is being applied on the browser level so again if i change this to the browser level and then what if again the mfa is applied this interface will give you a quick brief about how the conditional access will be impacting your end user uh, based on a certain condition now let's jump into the user itself and try to log in uh, from the browser and see if the MFA will be applied or not. And then we will try to log in from the desktop client. So log into the web client. The user is being requested to provide a specific information actually this information is required to enable the mfa that's why this user is getting 
such requirement on the beginning if this user is already fulfilled his information earlier they won't request him to fill this information again and they will just ask the user for mfa directly that's the situation in case of you are applying the mfa on the web client so uh, we will not go forward it's it's only demonstrating how the mfa is being applied now let's try to log in with the same user from the desktop client so I have opened the desktop client. I will add a new user. This user will be avd.allah.com. By the way, we will have another session for workspace URL. It will help your user to identify their workspace without the need to put uh, their URL. As you can see here, uh, it tell me that you cannot find any workspace that associated with your email address that's because my domain is uh, just being created which is uh, avd.atala.com but if I just removed the, the avd and left it for atala.com only I have already configured the, the workspace URL and it will directly switch me to login so we will have uh, a different session for this how we can configure the DNS for our workspace to, to give the user the smooth login in, instead of uh, providing them with the URL that they have to fill here and then once they are filling it they, you have to log into the interface itself so actually as an AVD user uh, as an avd.atala.com I would have to provide this URL on this bar and then I will have to log in on the next interface So this is the discovery URL that we will utilize right now because our Atala is our avd.atala.com is not configured with the DNS configuration. So I'll just back to the client and instead of the email address, I will put the URL and then click next. I will log in with the with the test user. Now, because we are logging in from the desktop client, which is, should be trusted as a conditional act from the conditional access policy perspective, once we put the password, uh, we shouldn't be asked for the MFA. So the user already logged in and the data will be featured now and as you can see it didn't ask us for the MFA at all. So let's scroll down a bit. Yeah, as you can see the new account is already configured and I already logged into the service and it didn't ask us for MFA. So this is just was like a kind of quick uh, understanding of how the conditional access policy is being applied for a specific application and under a specific uh, condition, uh, also with, with, with a specific client application and a specific device platform. So thank you and I hope this is was informative for you and see you in the next session.